What is going on everyone? It's the print house and this is a very very important video guys If you're watching this, I'm gonna be telling you every single important setting under expert mode This video will tell you how to start using expert mode watch the whole thing I guarantee you it will be the number one most helpful video of this entire series Guys, I don't want to make this too long, so I'm going to get started right now. I really hope I can keep this under 10 minutes, but, <laughs> but I have to explain it all uh, this way you guys can understand. So guys, if you watched the first video on the expert mode and how to do machine profiles and printer or, and material profiles, great. This is taking it to the next step and how to actually tune material settings in order to print them properly. Um, so guys, first off, we're going to look at the anchor make FDM settings and the next thing that we're going to do is close this because these, they're important, but you don't need to touch them. Um, so we're going to go into quality. Now, uh, layer height is the only thing here that you need to be concerned with and you can really set it to pretty much whatever you want. Uh, the smaller you go, the higher quality print you go. The, uh, the larger you get, the lower quality print you're gonna get. So this is how thick one line of plastic is gonna be. So standardly you use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and so your layer height is going to be 0.2, 0 0.16, 0 0.24, though, and I went out of order, 0 0.16, 0 0.2, and 0 0.24. Those are the most common uh, values if you want high detail you use 0.16 if you want normal detail you use 0.2 if you want uh, very you know less detail you use 0.24 now the smaller values are going to take longer to print and you're probably going to have a higher chance of uh, of a print failure if you go any if you go below 0.16 you have a high chance of getting a nozzle clog uh, and now these are now this is very specifically with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So if you put a 0.2 millimeter nozzle in, you can you know all you can change these settings. But guys, um, that's getting even more advanced than this video. So stick with a 0.4 nozzle, and then you go 0.16, 0.2, 0.24. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into walls. Now the uh, the settings you want to pay attention to here are uh, wall line count extra uh where alternate extra wall um print thin walls which is down here and then uh, z seam alignment and then seam corner preference now the wall count is how many uh and i'll show you right here uh how many like thicknesses you go around without um without doing infill so as we see here you have uh, so many walls, right? So this uh, orange is the, let's see if I can. So in this case, as you're going around, that's one wall. This is a second wall. And now this is a third wall. So this model has three walls. So go back to the slice setting. And as you can see, there's three walls. Uh, everything on the inside of the wall is gonna be infill. Everything uh, else is, you know, the wall. Uh, so then uh, print alternate extra wall. So an alternate extra wall is just going to make your model stronger. So if you're doing anything that requires a little bit of strength, alternate extra wall is going to be your friend. Print thin walls. This is just good uh, in case you have, you know, thin areas. Uh, there's not much to say there. Um, Z seam alignment. This is very, very important. So what your Z seam is is the location in which you go to the next layer so as we've already discussed in a previous video you go to the next this is you know from 38 to 39 somewhere on here and you can actually see right here is where i believe it is this is going to be where the nozzle starts the next layer so you know eventually somewhere on here you know it goes around and it goes around and then it goes around again and right here is where it does a z seam at this point right here the gantry for the z axis is going to move up and then it's going to start printing the next layer so your z seam is going to be right here now the the thing about z seams is that uh it leaves a little blob of filament it's very hard i mean not not always but 
in most cases a little blob of filament is going to be kind of seeping out of the wall and it's going to be noticeable on your print now z seam alignment this sharpest corner and smart hiding for seam corner preference this does the best it possibly can to analyze your model and it puts your z seam at a corner so think of having a box you have four corners it tries to do its best to put the z seam at one of the sharpest corners obviously if you have four of the exact same sharpnesses it just picks one of them but the point is the reason it does that is because if you have an extra little mini blob of filament on a corner the human eye generally doesn't see it or doesn't detect it and it just doesn't look bad so you know if you have a whole sphere think like a coke can kind of thing you're gonna have there's never there's not a single corner on the entire uh, cylinder so or a sphere whatever it is there's not a corner anywhere so you're gonna have a z seam somewhere it's gonna be noticeable and that's your worst case scenario your best case scenario is a box anyway guys you should always keep this on sharpest corner and smart hiding if you put it on random the z seam is gonna be random everywhere and I mean obviously and what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a model that looks like it has um severe like uh they're called zits they're gonna be randomly all throughout the entire model and in my opinion random just looks terrible um if you have it on shortest it's just going to do the most efficient route regardless of where the z seam is going to be just whatever's efficient um and uh so we're going to go on now from walls to top and bottom the only thing you need to really focus on here is top layer and bottom layer so uh before you get to the um before you get to the infill layers which these lines are in you know these are infill layers right here uh before you get to those it does a certain number of uh top and bottom or in this case bottom layers and and based on the setting here uh, if i move this up to four this is the very last bottom layer see if i go to five there's now infill and it does the same thing when you come to the top and i'm not going to be able to really zoom out here uh very easily i don't think but uh you got to trust me on this one maybe i can get it uh when we get up here to the top uh there's going to be four layers on the top now guys the uh anchor make slicing software defaults these to four i think you should move it to five personally um so i'd keep those at five uh moving along you have infill so the only thing you need to pay attention to here is infill density and infill pattern so generally i would not go below 15 percent infill and in most cases i would not go above 25 percent infill stay between 15 and 25 and then you know after that if you don't if 25 is not enough you're probably printing something completely solid in which case you're going to change this to 100. um so if we go to uh let's just say 15 percent infill and we have the grid pattern um the grid pattern is going to look like let me get it sliced the grid pattern is going to look like this it looks like a grid then we're going to change it let's just say cubic cortic uh, or quarter cubic sorry <laughs> so all of these infill patterns look different and it's not just a matter of what they look like you know these all perform differently so potentially if you're printing something with tpu which is a very squishy rubbery material some of these might actually perform better than the others and here's gyroid i'm just going to show you this as one more uh thing to to keep in mind um just the point is they all look different and they all function differently they have different strengths and different weaknesses guys i'm not going to show all of these here and i actually don't know all the strengths and weaknesses of each one if you look online you can find very 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 easy uh representations of what every single one of these infill patterns are these are not custom and specific to anchor make sl uh, slicer these just exist in pretty much every slicer you can read up on these yourself and figure out all of the best ones so we're going to leave infill go to material the only thing you really need to pay attention to here is going to be printing temperature plas are generally going to print at um 200 or 205 upwards to 215 um and then you're going to look at build plate temperature generally pla is build plate between 50 and 60. um if you get to something like abs 
or a PETG, I print those also. Those print somewhere in the neighborhood of 230 to 245 uh, Celsius. And then they want a build plate temperature of somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 85 to 105 Celsius. Um, so printing temperature and build plate temperature, uh, guys, depending on the material you're printing, probably PLA, but depending on the material you're printing, uh, you would want to be looking at these. So after material, we're going to go to speed. Guys, the only thing that you need to put focus on here is going to really be print speed. Um, the Anchor Make M5 is a little bit of a unique machine in that it prints so ridiculously fast. Um, generally, you are printing at somewhere between 75 and 100 millimeters per second. You can tell that the Anchor Make is drastically faster. Guys, I would not touch this number, but if you do want to, you can go lower. The only difference is if you start to go lower and you don't modify everything else, you're going to potentially ha have issues because, you know, all of these uh, other settings kind of really need to go hand in hand with print speed. So be careful changing print speed. However, if you go and you import someone else's profile that is a known profile, print speed is going to be a big one and it's probably going to be lower than this. You know, you get a Corality Ender 3 uh, profile for PLA Plus, and they might have theirs at 80 millimeters per second. And if you want to, you can modify from there. Generally speaking, if you have a higher print speed, you're also going to need a higher uh, printing temperature. Um, if you have a lower print speed, you can stick with, you know, 200 to 215 area. Um... And like I said, guys, I'm not going to go terribly, terribly in detail on this. I just want to tell you guys all of the very important settings to be focusing on. So uh, under travel, this is very important. We have retraction. Um, what retraction is, is when the nozzle of the machine no longer needs to print filament the, uh, in the particular location. And it needs to travel to a completely different location. For instance... If I am printing, uh, if I can get a good view, if the nozzle is printing this finger right here and now it's done printing this finger and it needs to move to this finger, that is a travel move. So that is what travel is. It's going from one location to the next location without printing. So guys, what retraction is, is when it does, when, when the printer does a travel move, it sucks, the, it sucks the filament out of the nozzle. The reason it sucks the filament out of the nozzle is because you get something called a uh, nozzle bleed or, or like, um, it's, it's like nozzle bleed. What happens is the, the extruder is not actively pushing filament out of the nozzle, but there's a pressure buildup inside the nozzle and that pressure buildup actually makes the, makes the plastic ooze out of the nozzle. You, you'll hear oozing as well. And when you're doing a retraction, or sorry, when you're doing a travel move, that oozing is what creates uh, stringing or wisps. So stringing is the same thing as wisps, except wisps are very thin. You know, they fly in the air and you can kind of burn them with a with a, uh, a flame kind of thing. Stringing is, is thicker, is thicker, um, you know, oozing essentially between one location and the next. Um, you've also, uh, with retraction, you have retraction distance, retraction speed, you've got your retraction distance. When you perform a retraction move, it sucks three millimeters of filament back into, uh, it, it sucks it out of the nozzle. And then when it's done doing its travel move, it then primes three millimeters of filament. So if you want extra filament primed, then you have this, you should probably leave this one at zero. Um, but anyway, retraction distance, you have retraction speed as well. These are going to be dependent on the material that you're printing. So obviously guys, these are, you know, you're gonna have to go off and do your own looking. I'm just uh, letting you know the very specific uh, parameters that you need to be focusing on. Um, then lastly, you have combing mode. Combing mode just tries to help you keep the nozzle within the infill. So in the case of this, if I am traveling from here to here, what I want to do is the best that I, and this is not a great, this is not a great example, but um, the, what I want to do is keep the travel move within the infill as much as possible. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I get stringing and it's within the infill, 
once the model is done being printed, the walls and the skin are going to be completely engulfing those strings and they'll never be seen. So that's what combing is. It's very important as well. Um, so after travel, we open up cooling. Guys, don't touch this. There's nothing in here that you really need to touch. The only thing that you could ever potentially think to change is the fan speed. And you're only going to be changing fan speed uh, in very rare, rare occasions. I would just, you know, forget that I even said that <laughs> um then you have support hey guys i'm skipping support in this video because there's too much to talk about and it's such a widely questioned topic i have made a separate video on support you can go find that on my channel guys let's move on to build plate adhesion so after support we have build plate adhesion build plate adhesion is very basic i don't actually really ever use build plate adhesion unless i need to uh, which is almost never. PLA pretty much never, ever, ever needs this. So if it's on skirt, skirt, what it's going to do is we'll turn all this stuff off. So this down here on the bottom is, uh, I need to get a better angle. Uh, let's see here. Where is this good angle at? Uh, all right, this is fine. So you see here your support, which is turned off, <laughs> which you look at that. Uh, or sorry, not support, uh, duh, 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 adhe adhesion, this is what I want. This is your ad uh, adhesion. A skirt just goes around your model. It doesn't touch your model. The only reason you ever even use a skirt really is to just prime the nozzle and get all the gunk out of the nozzle. So if we change this to a brim, a brim actually touches the, no it actually touches the model and the brim really it keeps the model from peeling up so sometimes whenever you're slicing or whenever you're printing a model it cools down too rapidly and the plastic warps and when the plastic warps and you can now see that this skirt or this adhesion is substantially larger so if, and and if i turn the outer walls and the inner walls on you can see that this is actually touching now the uh you know these outer walls are now touching the brim and one more time i go back to skirt to give you an idea of what's happening here um the skirt does not touch the outer wall zoom in now you can see that all of this blue adhesion actually doesn't touch the model um and then you have one more thing called a raft i will not even cover a raft in this video because i have never actually needed to use a raft a raft generally is putting a band-aid on a problem and there's a better way to solve it so i don't recommend anyone ever use a raft and from everything that i mentioned if you want to know what a particular setting should be uh go for uh go for reddit go to r3d printing so um on reddit you've got uh r3d printing this is a very 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 helpful subreddit lots of people will go to the they'll post their own question asking for help and as a matter of fact there is a flare there's a question flare there's a troubleshooting flare so if you don't know what a setting should be you can make a print and then you can take a picture of it post the print onto r3d printing and then you can say hey what is this see like this guy says what type of connector is this see look at this my print keeps leaving these stringy globs what are they and how do i get rid of them and if you have any other questions on any other um exact settings so guys make sure to follow along I'll be posting these videos as they come out. Guys, if it was helpful, please leave a like and a subscribe. Once again, if you guys have any questions, you could put some comments down below and I will answer them. Otherwise, guys, I'll leave you be and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.